For our next painting, we're going to use the same technique of flow, but we're going to work in a more controlled manner and create these striped effects on our feathers. This time we'll be working in two halves on our feather. So you'll want to have a center line down the middle of your feather and to start out with, we'll wet just one side. Remember the technique of using a little too much water and then mopping it up. When I paint the first half of my feather, I take the water all the way to my center pencil line. So when you paint the other side, you're gonna leave a small strip in between the two halves. But on the first one, I like to go all the way to the pencil line, it's just easier. I used a size eight brush to get my feather wet and now I'm gonna drop down to a smaller brush so that I can have more control over the water content when I start creating my stripes. Here I'm using a number five. I start out by making myself a nice saturated and wet puddle of paint. I'm using here the blue from the Classics Prima palette. I want to control how much water and paint are gonna go into that water, so I don't go in with a fully loaded brush. I'm using here about a half load. You can try maybe even a little less until you see how your paint is gonna flow into your paper. You can always add more saturated paint on top of what you've already done instead of trying to take paint away, which is a much harder process. Once I see how the paint is gonna flow onto my wet paper, I then leave a white space and create my next stripe. So I do the same process throughout the entire feather. I work from the center line out to the edge of the feather and I leave white space in between each stripe. This really is the best exercise that I know of to understand how water and color are gonna combine onto a wet paper. So really take some time to explore using different amounts of water and color and different size brushes and loading your brush to full capacity and then dropping it down to different levels. You'll really get to understand your paint better. Once you've got your stripes created, then you can come back in with a slightly damp brush and just start to clean up some areas. You can add more intensity to your center lines, or you can use a slightly damp brush to just kind of manipulate some of your edges and clean it up. Just keep in mind that if your paper has started to completely dry, it's time to stop. <laughs> so where I'm adding more color here, the paper is still wet and so it will still allow paint to flow. If your paper has started to dry, then it's best just to let it dry. Now we'll start on the second side and you start exactly the same way. I'm gonna wet this entire side, leaving a tiny space in between my pencil line and where my water is gonna go. That will create that center stem that later on we can paint in a contrasting color. So before you start painting your second side, just take a moment and ask your perfectionist to take a back seat. You don't have to worry about getting these two sides perfectly symmetrical. Even in nature, that's never true. So really just get lost in the flow and let watercolor do what watercolor does best. You'll repeat the same process on this side as the other side. You can use the same pattern that you already have in place, dropping in intense color where you dropped it on the other side, working from the middle line outwards. Or you can get really crazy and do alternating. So you can put the intense color where you had the white on the other side. Really experiment with different types of patterns because none of these have to be symmetrical. So just let your mind wander. <laughs> 
Once I get to about this point, I can see that the watercolor that I'm adding to my feather is starting to wander around a bit too much because there are puddles forming. So I just take a quick, quick second and use my brush as that mop technique. I'm just mopping a little bit of the water out and this allows you to have more control. So just monitor as you go along. You'll be able to see if your paint is moving around too much and it only takes a second to wipe your brush off and take out some of the water supply. Once I get to the end of creating my stripes and they're where I want them to be, I can now go back while my paper is still damp and add areas of intensity that I want to. I can also clean up any edges that are rough or that I see need attention because remember as you're creating the stripes you're working against time your paper is going to start to dry so you really want to get the color laid in and then you can come back and make these small tiny details Here I'm just taking a slightly damp brush and pulling in color down into my quill. You can use the same color that you use for the feather or you can wait until you do that center line and add a different color to it. The quill is such a small area that really you can do it at any point. You don't have to do it while the feather is still wet. Remember that your perfectionist has taken a back seat, so at some point you've got to stop painting and just let watercolor take over and do the magic while it dries. So don't worry about those imperfections that you might see. They will be part of the magic once you start decorating and adding enchantment. 